I mean, so in fact, this is what went in the trunk of the car. And you can actually see there was no Bell System logo, uh, which is on that. Stu Tartarone has watched history unfold up close. In fact, he's played a role in making it happen. He was one of the techs who developed cell phones when he joined AT&T Labs. Decades later, his work has hit a milestone, 40 years since the first commercial cell phone call was made. The team uh, was really formed in the late 60s, early 70s. I came to join Bell Laboratories in 1972 when this was a concept. Uh, never existed, and I had the opportunity as part of that team to do all the technology work that led to the first commercial call in 1983. The early model was very different from the compact devices we now keep in our pockets. Technological advances have allowed the components to get smaller and smaller, but in the beginning, they needed to fit in a car. Uh, what I have in my hand is one of the very first cell phones. Now, it was a little bit different from something that's in your hand today because it was a, vehicu a vehicular service, and this went in people's cars, and the trunk was a transmitter on top were antennas. What started as a niche gadget for those who could afford it has become an everyday essential, and even those in the business did not predict that. My very first job uh, at Bell Labs when I joined in 1972 was to support a market survey to understand if there was a market demand for commercial cellular service. And professional survey done, it, when it was completed, the conclusion was there was no market for such a service. A similar survey was done about 10 years later, <clears throat> and the same conclusion came back. So no one could really anticipate the proliferation that's taking place today. As the Federal Communications Commission pushes to reclassify broadband access through phones and computers as an essential service on par with other utilities like water or power, Tartarone says that designation could benefit the industry. It, it's something that I think uh, you know, needs to be sort of considered in the fact, does everyone in this nation have guaranteed broadband and be able to, to use it? And maybe it would spur competition in different areas. There's this great digital divide that exists in this country. And, and AT&T is really working to deal with that. Mobile phones have been around as far back as the 1940s, but it wasn't until the FCC gave AT&T the go-ahead to open the world's first cell tower phone network that the phones became commercially publicly available. First marketed to business people in 1983 and growing into the smartphone-driven world we live in today. Ted Shaffrey, Associated Press, Middletown Township, New Jersey.